Hello Biotechnicans, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we have come up with an yet another interesting video and this is on proteomics. Okay, and we will also know what are the future scopes of proteomics and what if I, I study proteomics and then perceive the best of the best in my career in terms of proteomics. So for understanding this concept, let's dive in. Welcome back. Students are perceiving various kinds of branches in kinds of in, in terms of life sciences. Now it could be genomics, it could be proteomics, it could be transcriptomics. But the major question what our students they ask us, sir, you know, which is more relevant for me? How do I perceive it? Okay, where do I perceive it? And hence, this is a content which has been created exclusively for our students who wants to perceive their career in proteomics. Let's look into the first component. The first thing is, why should I perceive proteomics? Now, if everything is business, so we need to also see that will our knowledge be in trending for the next 10 years? Okay, when I look into this, so this is the statistics from the global proteomic market which talks about the status of 2020 and the status of proteomics in 2028. And if you look into the data, the data is actually skyrocketing. So in 2020, we had a, 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 an income which has been generated with $21.64 billion and this can skyrocket by another 16.50% to you know, a final amount of $73.17 billion, which can make a great revolution in terms of proteomics. And please remember, when there's a market, there should be a supply. So you performing your degrees, you getting your degrees in proteomics, you getting your degrees in bioinformatics, this will give you a great boom in your future. Now, if that's the case, what is this common workflow of proteomics? Now, as a basic, you know, biochemist, I would always go with a basic platform of proteomics, which starts with a resource molecule. It could be either bacteria, plant or human cell. And from there, I go on to an extraction. The moment I go for extraction, I can have multiple biomolecules. But however, here I go for a specific kind of a biomolecule, which is your protein. Now, once I have the protein, either I go on to a protein precipitation technique or I will go for chromatographic technique or I will perform electrophoresis so that I can elude my protein. Now, once I have the protein, later I need to understand what is the nature of that particular protein and hence I will go for digestion. The moment I go for digestion from the entire big macromolecule, I will concise it into a smaller molecule and this is your peptide. Now, once you have the peptide, again, I need to go for a separation of peptide. For its characterization, I will go for either the MALDI or I can, I can go for LCMS. Finally, I have huge amount of data. This huge amount of data has to be analyzed. Now, this data will give you whether your protein is of a novel kind of a thing or whether it is already a repetitive protein, which is again reproduced. So, with this, the major identification, once you identify, so you have three major domains in proteomics. One, are you looking for the functional proteomics or you're looking for the structural proteomics? And the third one is, are you looking for a differential proteomics? Now, all these three are still the, uh, you know, they come under the big arena of the umbrella, which is called as proteomics. But however, their function is entirely different. So you need to design that on which component are you actually planning your research. So it could be either in identification of protein-protein interaction or protein-DNA interaction or protein-RNA interaction. So we call it as the functional analysis. Now, if you are looking at the structural analysis, then you are talking about what exactly is the toxin which is interacting, what is the metal ion interacting with it, and very importantly, how exactly your protein structure is getting affected. Now, when I talk about the differential proteomics, now we are looking upon how do I differentiate between the difference in the protein expression pattern, whether my protein, when I take up a drug, whether this particular protein is getting upregulated or downregulated. So for doing this, I have 2D gel electrophoresis as one of the major technique which has been used for, you know, uh, your DNA expression studies. So it is very importantly, you need to determine what exactly you want to elucidate. 
So once we have understood this, now let us look into the normal pipeline and how exactly day to day your protein technologies are been always evolving. Now let me try to decipher this entire thing of proteomics into five different domains. The first one is the conventional domain whatever I have explained you in terms of spectrophotometry, ELISA, blotting, chromatography. This is the classical method for prote proteomics. But however, now you have a new technique wherein there you can study not just one protein but the advanced techniques in proteins which will talk about the Edmund sequencing, you can talk about the protein array, mass spectroscopy and gel based analysis. So but people were simply not happy with what we had. So hence new new transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary research applications were amalgamated with proteomics and that is how you have the label free sequencing because normally when we do sequencing we have the labels the tags which have been attached now there's a technique of sequencing wherein this is called a label free sequencing we really want you people to go and look into it and if possible we will try to make an exclusively video on the label free sequencing method. So this will give you the quantitative component of proteomics. Now once I do this I am not happy with what I have. So in my body there are thousands of proteins I want to see example when I take up a paracetamol as a drug how exactly the entire global proteomic changes are, are, are being affected and for this there is something which is called as high throughput proteomics. Now in high throughput proteomics we are talking about NRN, uh, you, you have the X-ray crystallography and you have the NMR spectroscopy which is actually creating a great revolution in terms of the structural elucidation and characterization of the protein. Now once I have this huge data, how do I analyze it? Now for the analysis again a great help is bioinformatics. So as you as biologists you need to always remember you need to upgrade in terms of bioinformatics because the amount of data what you are getting in proteomics is so huge that manually handling this data is very very difficult and hence you need to upgrade yourself with bioinformatics and one good news is Biotechnica actually organizes many workshops it actually announces a lot of uh, scholarships in terms of various master classes and internships and please do subscribe and register for these particular internships which will actually help you in understanding in better understanding of bioinformatics through a very short term mo module you can understand bioinformatics and decipher the complicated proteomics in a much better way. So moving on forward you have various kinds of applications. So you would think about sir you said about the classical and the advanced techniques but where do I apply this? Okay, you think of something wherein you can you can actually apply and align the principles of proteomics in that particular field and it can go into the protein expression profiling, the post transcriptional and post translational changes, you can also look for the protein protein interaction and very importantly the structural proteomics which will define the protein complexes, sub proteome complexes and organometallic complexes with the protein and this can also work out with the proteome mining which is is a, a huge domain in drug discovery and therapeutics. So with all this understanding let us see what are the major four functions of proteomics and the major four areas which are ha having a lot of boom, lot of demand in terms of biochemistry, in terms of uh, you know proteomic analysis and very importantly in structure biology through bioinformatics. So the first thing is Sequencing. Once I have the novel protein, I need to go for sequencing and analysis of the sequence becomes very very important. So once I have the sequence ready, I need to have the structural modifications or the structural changes which goes on to it. So now you know how exactly your primary sequence will behave, then how exactly your secondary sequence and from the secondary sequence how do you develop a tertiary sequence or quaternary sequence, again this is very very important. Now once you have done with it, now you already have a protein, now with this protein how are you studying the functional interaction between one protein and another protein plays a huge difference. And finally these proteins when they come together how are they getting expressed whether one is actually you know dominating the other or the other is actually dominating the, the, the rest of the protein. So understanding this protein protein interaction network becomes very very important in proteomics and for all this okay proteomics is the key. Now moving on further so you have applications and applications can go from tumor metastasis to renal diseases to nephrology to neurology 
and for also for antibody production, antibody profiling and treatment of proteins for various kinds of diseases. And very importantly, a great impact is towards the nutritional research which can go into the, you know, uh, designing newer drugs towards the fetal and maternal complications. And very importantly, you have a huge contribution of proteins, especially with lifestyle disorders such as cancer and diabetes. So, apart from that, I can also look into five major arenas wherein I am, I am addressing the issues of diseases, I am addressing the issues of food and nutrition, the biological component of it and not to forget the biotechnological component of it and then very importantly the therapeutic component, how exactly I can use protein as a drug towards you know uh, uh, to solve issues of various kinds of lifestyle disorders. Now at the end you can have this divided into three major domains. So the first domain as we said the studying the structural component which we call it as the chemical proteomics. The next one is once I know the structure I study the functional proteomics so that I know the function of that particular protein and very importantly finally if the protein has to come as a drug into the market then I need to perform clinical proteomics. So these are the three major arenas which will bring in proteomics for the for the for the for all kinds of diseases you have one mantra that could be one of the one of the approaches which is proteomics. Now with this of the, our understanding we can also look into certain other applications very uh, very quickly example you have the drug target identification you have the disease biomarker identification and very importantly trust me my dear friends precision medicine that is you know uh, customized medicine will be the key and proteomics will be the baseline for all these kind of new new technologies. Then you have the qualitative proteomics, quantitative proteomics and then proteomic profiling becomes very very important. Now post translational modification, now uh, people are talking about technologies such as CRISPR and as you know CRISPR utilizes a special kind of a protein which is called as Cas protein that is CRISPR associated protein. So all these will have a huge role in actually genome editing technology. Now not to forget finally you can also work at an immunological level wherein you can also um, represent MHCs complexes which could be a pe peptide identifier and with this peptide identifier I can diagnose certain very lethal diseases which for which I don't have cure forget about the cure I still don't have methodologies for for detection of that particular diseases and proteomics will pay ways for detecting all these kinds of detrimental diseases. So with this I want you people to have a lot of emphasis when you are studying towards proteomics because yes genomics transcriptomics is still important but the end product is protein. Now I need to look if you are interested with looking at the end product please remember proteomics is your major domain and at Biotechnica we wish all the very best for the future protein biochemists. So all the very best. So if you like this particular video, please do not forget to subscribe and also if you have any suggestions or comments, please drop a message so that we will try to create a new content for you which can actually help you in your research. All the very best. Take care.